called a happy birthday. Baby, find something that shows off a little bit of cleavage. Happy holidays, happy holidays. Golly, I feel good, Tom. I feel particularly good today. Do you know why? Because I'm zestfully clean. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Talk Soup. I, of course, am Carol Leifer, sitting in for Greg Kinnear. We'll be back tomorrow for the weekend show. Now, since it is the holidays, we are chock full of unhappy family highlights. Meet a wife who propositions all of the men in Richard Bay's audience, plus hear from a guy who can't even remember his wife's birthday. <laughs> But first, we have a heartwarming clip courtesy of the Sally Jesse Raphael Show. Now, it's always hard for a mother to cut off the emotional umbilical cord, but for Anne, it's reached epic proportions. You see, Anne doesn't like her 17-year-old son, Brian, going out with, yes, a 43-year-old woman named Patty. Brian himself had a few words for his mother on the subject. I came here today to also do something else. You know, to show that I do love Patty. And as I soon know as... you do. I know you do. That's why I, I just want to make sure that you're, you're a kid. And I'm your mom. And I, I'm, I'm protective. And even if you make mistakes, Brian, I'll still love you. Tell him. Yeah. Brian, even if you make mistakes, I'm still going to love you. Okay. I'm and as honest. I was saying, as soon... As I came here today to also do something else. To show that I really do love Patty. Oh! <gasps> He's about to make a mistake. Oh! And as soon as I, I turn 18, I would like Patty to be my wife. Oh. He doesn't have a job. He's worked eight days in his whole life. I don't... She probably bought her own ring. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Oh. Look, honey. It's an engagement ring and a decoder. <laughs> Guess that paper route is really paying off. <laughs> now, the woman in the middle is psychologist Dr. Carol Friedlander. She tried to persuade Anne to let go, but it was to no avail. Monday on Sally Jesse Raphael, meet waitresses who endure sexual advances from the boss and from the customers. Hmm. Now, depending on how you look at it, Trisha is either a very understanding wife or the biggest doormat on the talk show circuit. Her husband, Brian, cheated on her while she was lying near death at the hospital. Brian also tried to hit on Trisha's best friend, Ginger. Despite all of this, Trisha has remained married to Brian. Wednesday, Jenny Jones and her audience spoke to the three about this less-than-ideal marriage. You should have said stop. Knowing that she's your wife's friend, knowing what your wife is going through or have been through, you should have took responsibility and said no. First off, this that. was way before that. If that truly happened, if she's there rubbing your neck and everything, maybe, Ginger, you shouldn't have done it. If, if I didn't. I may have rubbed his shoulders when he was saying, oh, my neck really hurts. Um, you know, you it was... You remember, you have to understand yeah. that Ginger's a very uh, affectionate type, as touching and feely. You know, she's not that kind of a... She's different. She's it was not. a misinterpretation of yeah, the action. I yes. Think. I want to know why you're still with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still with him because I'm a Christian, and when I first, when I first found out, when I first found out about it, the first thing I did was call our minister, and he was there within about five minutes, and he sat there for two and a half hours, and he talked to both of us about the situation, and he did marriage counseling with us for the next about six weeks. But this wasn't a one-time affair. Yes, it was. I mean, it was a one-time constant for a year and a half, but it was a one-time thing. See, now, of course, had the woman been Jewish, she would have kicked him out right away. That would have been it. <laughs> now, the one affair Brian admitted to was with the family babysitter. What a guy. Monday, Jenny Jones reverses the infidelity equation. She'll hear from husbands who are still with their cheating wives. 
Now, earlier this week, we showed you highlights of the first annual Joan Rivers Job Swap Contest. Wednesday, through the amazing use of reruns, Joan turned the clocks forward and showed highlights of her second annual Job Swap Contest. Here's how the auditions went. Today, do people really look like their pets? Well, find out for some of the perfectly normal people who have some very extraordinary pets. Plus, of course, gossip, gossip, gossip. It's all coming right up, so you stay right there while, where you are, okay? look at cake every woman can enjoy without guilt. You get the feeling this woman doesn't get out much? Now, Jackie, the first woman you saw audition was the eventual winner. Still to come on Talk Soup, Mo will hear from a group of men who will try anything artificial in order to keep their bodies looking good, plus more marital turmoil courtesy of the Richard Bay Show. Simon! She, she told me before the show yeah. she's going to wear black because she looks skinny in black. Well, but yeah, but she... No, wait. Listen. I'm Simon, surprised at you. Simon, she had twins. Welcome back. Carol Liefer sitting in for Greg Kinnear. Isn't it a festive time of year, Tom, isn't it? The most wonderful time of the year. You know, Andy Williams said that. <laughs> Do you hear what I hear? <laughs> now you know. Okay, disgruntled wives who were turned off by their dud husbands was the topic of Wednesday's Richard Bay Show. His guests included Ronit, that's right, Ronit, and Simon. Ronit says Simon used to be the man of her dreams. Now he just drinks beer and fossilizes the sofa with his butt print. Has Simon changed physically or in appearance at different Yes, met? when I met Simon, he was a size 34. And today he's a 38 plus, 38 to 40. We have a picture of him before. There he is, yeah. And how many years ago was isn't this? That, isn't that beautiful? Now you tell me. He had no stomach. He was flat. He was handsome. He what had a muscles. Is somebody on today the right he's over there also. nothing but a couch potato. There was somebody on the right over there. Show it again. <laughs> okay, show it again if you will. Show it yeah. again. There's somebody on the right. Look at this beautiful. Look how skinny she was. Look. I'm still skinny. Look how skinny I'm she still was. beautiful. I think many men out there no, would not, not throw are. me out of bed. No way. Simon, she she told me before the show yeah. she's gonna wear black because she looks skinny in black. But, but yeah, but she. No way. Listen. Oh. I'm Simon, surprised at you. Simon, she had twins. I had twins, so? and I also want to ask the question. What did you have, audience. Simon? Twins too. Would yeah. any of you men throw me out? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Know. And also, when I met my husband, he spoke perfect English. <laughs> Somehow he picked up this Middle Eastern accent. <laughs> anyway, Simon did manage to show his svelte body to the TV viewers. Let's have a look. I need a moment. Oh. Monday, Richard Bay will hear from some fathers who don't like their daughter's boyfriends because of their race. Hmm. Now, if you think women hogged all plastic surgery appointments, then this clip from Mo will enlighten you. 
Most spoke with a group of men who artificially alter their bodies to give themselves that beefcake look. This includes pectoral implants and tanning booths. I like being darker, and I like the way I look when I'm darker. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who like to try out a tiny tanning booth if they haven't already. You know, I like what it does. I don't spend hours in it if I'm really white, you know, if I feel like I'd like to get in there for a, um, What's maybe, wrong with being white? maybe 20 minutes out of, a, out, of a, out of two weeks, I'll do it. I'm not in there every other so, day. Uh, uh, that feeling has to come from within. You, you hinted a, upon it before. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what religion you are. If you don't have that good feeling inside, no matter what you do, it's not going to change that. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> well, I right. with that too, Mo, but can there, be, it, can't there be a balance between yeah. the two? that you, you can still feel good ab ab inside but and so about yourself. But so far that you're sticking plastics under your skin, Okay, Benjamin? well, let's erase all that. That, that might be one area anymore. of my body that I, I feel I've improved. <laughs> but it doesn't take away that I don't have a... But you didn't improve it. Well, a I doctor feel I improved have. it. Now, you know, actually, my favorite part of that clip was, I love the guy on the left there. Let's look at him. Now, did you know this guy actually works in Vegas Reviews doing the fabulous Cher? <laughs> <laughs> And on weekends, the second show, he does half-breed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all I ever heard, half-breed. <laughs> on Monday, Mo will reunite two first-time lovers who haven't seen each other since the big event. Plus, Mo will talk about the first time she did it. On Wednesday, Jane Whitney examined the case of Scott Campbell. Campbell was a black man who was found hanged to death in his Philadelphia, Mississippi jail cell. Authorities ruled it a suicide, but family and friends say that Campbell was murdered because he was going out with a white woman. Campbell's girlfriend, Nikki Griffin, and his father, M.C., faced off against the police officer who arrested Campbell and the town's mayor. Give me one substantial piece of evidence that we killed your this son. This is a sad situation, and it makes us look bad because it happened in that jail. But, and we have all the sympathy in the world for Mr. Scott for losing a son. But this MC thing has been name, investigated by uh, MC. Mr. Okay, uh, Scott was his son's name, uh, Mr. Campbell. But this thing was investigated by four different units. Uh, they hired a private investigator who I have never even met. I well, you're going to meet him on this broadcast That's because he's I here. I've never yeah, seen he's going to be here, and he he does the, suspect the foul FBI play. The FBI investigated this, yeah. and the Justice Department, and our own police and department. And not one of them talked to me. And none of them talked to me. Why should they talk to you? Okay. You tell me why. Tell them no. He was not depressed. Oh, uh, are you a doctor? Or, are you legal? They said that you don't know if the boy was depressed or not. Yes, I do. There's no way possible. Do I know the doctor? Do I know he's depressed? Do I know he's depressed? He didn't live with you. I saw him every day. Where else? Okay, let me ask, day. Can I ask a basic question? It doesn't sure. sound like he was, I mean, you know, treated terribly well. <laughs> this happened. You you went into that jail cell and found the body at what? One o'clock in the morning? Ten minutes after. And he was so, not looked at one time while he was in that jail cell. Not one time. Can I ask you something? Don't they usually check for these things when you're incarcerated? Okay, give me your wallet. Yeah, your watch. Okay. The rope? Yeah, go ahead, keep it. No problem. <laughs> Enjoy. Monday on Shane Whitney, find out if the religious freak in your neighborhood could be the next wacko from Waco. Find out more on Cult Leaders Monday. Coming up on Talk Soup, a husband forgets his wife's birthday and Vicky will smash the hell out of some defenseless melons. Her with you, zestfully clean, and filling in for Greg Kinnear. Wednesday, Jerry Springer played marriage counselor for couples in trouble. The matrimonial bond between Michelle and Jason is definitely breaking. Michelle says that Jason doesn't spend any time with her anymore. Jason says that Michelle is always nagging at him, and that's why he leaves the house to be with his friends. What are we going to do to change? I guess go to work stay home all the time other than that and uh no that's not what i want that's, that's if you can't give me a little bit of an attention yesterday was my birthday i never even got a happy birthday what oh 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 <laughs> she did <laughs> not for you she did too yes she when? did tell I, me I, when I, where
where were remember we? Remember where we were? Because you, because you didn't say it. <laughs> yes, I did too. Now, okay. at home, before how we ever you, left. Okay. I don't mean to push up, but how could you talk? not remember that it's her birthday? Oh, I did remember. Oh, he knew. <laughs> oh, he didn't get you I anything. He didn't get me a car. Yeah. That's not the point. If he would have just woke up and said, happy birthday, Beth. Yeah. I said, oh, I today I... Okay. Okay. Today's Wait. my birthday. Okay. What do you want him... Okay. She's not saying never go out with friends again. Never... Ne you know, that's she exaggeration. Is. What, okay, what are you saying? What would be acceptable? You're not going to change everything in the world. So I what don't would want be acceptable? to change everything in the world. Okay. If he would just, like, one day a week or one day a month, I begged him to take me to Kate's Cove all summer. We will one weekend. One weekend we'll go. We, summer's over. You know, during the summer, I asked him to take me down to the cement pond, but he won't. He won't buy me a pecan log roll from Stuggies. He won't. On Monday, Jerry Springer examines the tragic reality of kids being caught in the middle of gang shooting. Vicki dedicated her entire show to relieving stress. Hmm. She brought in a doctor who offered some tips on how to reduce stress. Also on the show was, who else? Comedian Gallagher, who naturally used assorted melons to demonstrate his way of killing stress. Vicky, come on over here and get your girl hammer. A girl hammer? <laughs> is that a wimpy little girl it's hammer? It's not a wimpy. Speed okay. is necessary for maximum force, and I want you to be able to whack that okay. son of a gun. Okay, you come down then. <laughs> All right, Vicky, smack, right. smack that drunk driver. Who am I smacking now? Drunk driver! <laughs> Whoa! You see, Tom, the stage manager, has a spitting problem, so sometimes <laughs> I'm forced to wear this protective gear. <laughs> now, the melons represented different people, including infomercial host Susan Powder and the CEO of Group W Cable, with whom Vicky had a furious dispute over the ownership of The Vicky Show. Monday, Vicky will spend an hour with country music star Reba McIntyre. Cool it, Reba. <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> Montel's show is devoted to getting in shape. His guests included best-selling author Joyce Verdal. Is it Verdal? Verdal. One woman in the audience complained that her fiancé doesn't let her eat a lot because he's afraid she'll get fat. But Verdal had a few choice words for him. But I want to get on his case a little well, bit here. Well, I tried to... No. I want, I want to... Do, no, no. no. I try for both of us to eat. What? I try for both of us to watch what we eat. Right. Fat free. Can meal. I see your body? Will you take yeah. off your jacket? Yeah. Can I come up over there, Montel? Can I come over there? As I'm creeping up, can I come, come on over up, there? Come on, come on, Joyce. <laughs> no, all right, look, come here. Let me see something. All right, I first of do you do you think that you she's fat now? No, I don't. Okay. Now, do you think your body is perfect? No. Oh, not okay, at all. good. Then I'm not going to get on your case. But I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so make your stomach hard. Make your stomach hard. All right, for a man who work. for a man who works out, you know, you got to be doing a little something uh, extra well, there. Yeah. But uh, yeah. let me tell you, let me tell you something. What you're doing is not going to work, right? It's just like with children. You can't, you, the more you nag, the, then they're going to want to rebel, right? right? I'm telling them. She is an individual. You've got to let her go on her own program. And you know what's going to happen? You, you better be ready for this. I, may, I mean this. It happens all the time. Oh, yeah. You are going to be upset because this woman is going to have muscles yeah. everywhere. Men are going to be looking at her in the street. You know what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to be walking together in the street. Wait a minute. And a man is going to look directly. What's your name? Cindy. Cindy. He's going to look straight at Cindy and he's going to go, hi, and ignore you. <laughs> Ever have this? You know what I'm saying? Men are going to be looking at you in the street. I mean it, especially when I make her put on this gold bikini I have on. <laughs> now, Joyce Vertle's book is called Bottoms Up. She is also 50. That's right. Years young. Hmm. Montel will talk with teenage girls who quit school to become breeders for the white race. That'll happen Monday. Still to come on Talk Soup, a boyfriend tries to get his girlfriend to wear skimpier clothes.
welcome back to Talk Soup. I'm Carol Liefer. The guys who appeared on the Maury Povich show Wednesday have one thing in common. No, they don't have cures for cancer, and no, they don't have solutions to reducing the federal deficit. No, they haven't even found ways to prevent crime. What these guys want is to have their girlfriends dressed like sleazy rock goddesses. Now, let's see what he likes. I want to ask all of you women a question right now. Doesn't it give you a, just a nice, warm feeling to see the smiles on your husband's and boyfriend's faces when you uh, dress like this? No, because it's, because it's usually they have intentions behind that smile. <laughs> <laughs> no because no. If, if I'm walking around the house like this, like he likes me to, and when he comes up to me, he goes, Hi. <laughs> and you won't be able to help me. Hallelujah. And it's like I try to tell him. You know, he, he li he's, you know, he's a rocker. He likes some playboy-looking girls. And he's like, baby, you need, you know, we're shopping, no matter what it is. And this goes to we all the men, all the men, most, well, the majority of them. Baby, find something that shows off a little bit of cleavage. You know, just show it. And I'm like, oh, we're a training bra. <laughs> <laughs> cornbread I can make, cleavage I, I can't. Great. <sighs> cornbread I can make, cleavage I can't. Of course, from the poetry of Maya Angelou. Monday, Maury will examine devastating effects children can have on a couple's sex life. I'm Carol Liefer. Greg will be back tomorrow. Tune in tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 8 Pacific. See ya.